How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a different type of video. Normally I do videos that look at a certain type of car under a certain value because I spend most of my life trawling through Auto Trader. But what if I want more cars for my money? Well today I'm going to be looking at the best three car garages that you can buy for under £10,000, specifically looking at three cars that are very fun to own and drive. Each of the three cars serves a completely different purpose but they're each fun in their own right. If you like this kind of video and want to see more like it in the future then please let me know by hitting the like button. If this video hits a thousand likes I'll do a different video looking at a different maybe three or five or even ten car garage who even knows at this point or I'll try doing different price ranges like sub 5k and sub 20k and sub whatever k basically don't forget in the UK so prices in other countries may differ and whenever you buy any second-hand car maintenance repairs insurance road sets all that good stuff is important to remember if you haven't subscribed already please do at the time of making this video I need 40 subscribers to reach a hundred thousand which is just insane thanks to everyone for their support over the last few years it's been insane but without further ado let's get into the video so let's start off by defining what types of cars should be considered in our fun three car garage you can have any number of combinations for this so important to get this defined early and for anyone it's definitely going to depend on situation after some deliberation, I've settled on a combination that I think would be the most fun. The first is going to be the daily driver, the car that you jump into for any situation that will get you to the in-laws, take you to the shops, get the kids to school, or basically whatever other task is required of you. Can't have a three-car garage with no daily driver, surely. The second car will be a classic that you can take out on weekend drives into the countryside and spend a bunch of your hard-earned money on to keep it running and driving well, fearing all the time that you may be fighting a losing battle, but having great fun along the way knowing that you're driving your own classic labour of love. And the final car is a sports car, the kind of car that you smash around some B-roads, takes the odd track day with your friends and spend whatever money you have left on it to get a set of stiffer coilovers, bucket seats and some yellow stuff brake pads on it to leave your new lightweight alloys covered in dust. And just to give you some options, I'll give you three cars in each category and at the end of the video I'll tell you my perfect set of three. Okay, let's do it. So the first daily driver I want to mention is the Honda Civic Type R EP3 which would probably also fit into the track car category. But let's keep it in daily for now as a little daily hot hatch. It has a 2 litre inline 4 engine that makes 197 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6.4 seconds, actually making it the joint quickest car on this list. If we're talking about fun cars, you can't dispute a Civic Type R, particularly this one with the hallowed K20 engine block that loves to rev and is a great platform for extra power. Though it only comes as a three door, as long as your passengers are willing to clamber in, it does have five seats and 315 litres of luggage capacity, not bad at all for a hot hatch daily, and the car has and continues continues to be used as a daily for many people, which makes sense considering it is just the most aggressive version of an average everyday car. These start at around £2,500 and for the sake of this video I would personally aim to pay no more than £4,000 if I'm really trying to get three cars for under 10 k in reasonable condition. But a key benefit of this car is reliability, which is exactly what you want out of your daily. Rust can be an issue, particularly on the arches as Honda fitted them with what basically looks like carpet to line them, which retains water, making rusting easier. Up against the Civic we have another staple in the hot hatch world and a very good little daily particularly if you're in a city. The Mark V Golf GTI has a 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine that puts out 197 brake horsepower which means it'll go from 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds. One thing the Golf has over the other two dailies in this video is the option of 5 doors rather than 3. Even though I personally prefer it in 3 door spec, 5 doors definitely is more practical as a daily for a car person with a family. When it was new it was significantly more expensive than the Mark IV GTI had been as VW really updated and upgraded graded the car and it was said to have been built to a higher standard overall in their German factory. You can get it in manual or DSG auto depending on preference but whatever you go for it retains a historic GTI interior and additional features like the red accents. I personally think I'd have one of these as my next daily driver given it's almost rude to not own a GTI at some point in your life. These start at around £2,500 at the bottom end and just like the Civic I'd probably be looking at spending a maximum of 4k if I was after a 10k 3 car garage but it will still be high mileage for that kind of money. On reliability, coil packs, failing fuel pumps, boost leaks in the diverter valve and DSG problems are all known, but in reality it's a pretty robust car, just look at service history over mileage. The final daily I wanted to add into this list is also the cheapest, it's the R53 Mini Cooper S, which is a 1.6 litre supercharged inline 4 engine that makes 170 
brake horsepower and will manage 0-60 in 7 seconds. Now the Mini does lack one thing the other two dailies have, an entire seat, as it's a 4 seater instead of a 5, but then of course cramming 5 people into any of these cars is going to be a bit snug. As a run around though, owners on forums attest to these being like go-karts for the roads, and having driven a few Minis, they are actually quite nice to drive. The car was designed by legendary designer Frank Stevenson, who also designed greats of the Escort RS Cosworth, Maserati MC12, and the majority of McLarens including the P1. Though it doesn't look too much like the old Mini, it was designed with that in mind, and I do actually think it will go down as a well-loved car in future. Again, this car could have been thrown into the track car category given it literally has its own race series, and to be honest, it's nowhere near as practical as the Golf and Civic in terms of storage space at just 150 litres, but it's still usable, and considering these start at just £2,000, you can get them super cheap, meaning more money to spend on non-daily cars. Rust is starting to show up on many of these now though, and there are known issues with cracked cylinder heads, oil leaks, steering pump failures, drive shaft crunching noises, and cracking engine mounts. Let's jump over to the classics now. The first one I wanted to mention is a car that I nearly bought myself a few years ago, the BMW Z3. There are a bunch of engine options on these, but the cheapest is the one point nine litre inline four which makes 140 brake horsepower taking the car to 60 in 9.2 seconds which is pretty sedate in fact it's the slowest car in this video the z3 has slowly been increasing in price for a while now with the larger and more desirable engine options in particular leading the charge this is in part being helped by the z3m coupe soaring in value and the z3m roads to following it along both of which are now into proper classic price ranges ideally look for a post facelift model so anything from 1999 onwards as they benefited from a wider and more aggressive aggressive body as BMW were trying to make the car appeal to a more masculine market. This is as close as you'll get to a Z3M for a cheap price, starting at around £1,700 at the bottom end, and for a few grand you get a reasonable classic that you'll need to do some work on, but will take you around. Crazy as I declined to buy one in really good condition for around £1,800 back in 2016. There are known problems on these, and look out for tapping on startup or failing sensors, as well as thermostat failures. The next car I wanted to talk about is actually two differently named cars that are still effectively the same car, the Alfa Romeo GTV or Spider, depending on whether you prefer a coupe or convertible. You can't quite afford that sweet V6 engine if you want the full three car garage like I'm after in this video, so instead you'll be looking at the 2 litre twin spark inline 4 that makes 150 brake horsepower and goes from 0 to 60 in 8.2 seconds. I've mentioned in a recent video that I actually saw a Spider at the 2021 London Classic Car Show, which really tells you that this car is heading in that direction, and prices for ones in great condition really are soaring, although particularly with the V6 engine of course. The car was designed by Pininfarina, which is always a positive and the interior is a real highlight on these. It looks properly timeless with lovely leather seats and a simple analog dashboard that somehow just hits right. Spider or GTV, I think they both have their own distinct features that make them look pretty, though I think the absolute best looking is the Spider with the roof down. You can actually get these for under £2,000 but generally you'll find them at around £2,500 and I'd probably look to spend around £4,000 on one to begin my classic car journey. The Twin Spark engine is known for its oil pump and oil leak issues as well as over heating from failed thermostats and in some excessive cases head gasket failure. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you are remember to hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new please do subscribe if you haven't already as we are so close to 100k I might even hit it by the time this video comes out but either way please hit subscribe. The final classic car I want to talk about is the Jaguar XJS which I've spoken about in lots of recent videos so I'm not going to bang on too much about in this video especially as it's also the most expensive car I'm mentioning starting at around £5,000 at the bottom end for a running example. It has a 5.3 to V12 though which puts out 266 brake horsepower more than any other car on the list and goes from 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds. Plus it's also the most classic looking car of the bunch in my opinion. Since I've spoken about it so much recently let me focus instead on why I would consider getting one as part of a three car garage. Of the three classics on this list it's arguably the most iconic shape and is probably the most likely to get a bunch of other enthusiasts frothing at the mouth if you take it to caffeine and machine or wherever your equivalent of a car haven is. Plus the ability to lift up the bonnet and display that V12 while at a car show would always feel good as long as you keep it clean in there. It would of course limit your budget spend on other cars unless you go for a project car under the 5k mark. That wouldn't be impossible either as the V12 block is supposed to be pretty reliable. On to the final section now and I couldn't talk about cheap sporty cars with track potential without discussing the Mazda MX-5, specifically the second generation or NB car which is a 1.8 litre inline 4 engine that makes 140 brake horsepower taking it to
8 to 60 in 7.7 .7 seconds. I of course own the first generation NA which is a beautiful car in its own right and heading up in value as it reaches classic status, but the NB is basically a better car just without the pop up headlights. It was wider, more aerodynamic, less likely to injure pedestrians, slightly more luxurious and better in terms of braking and handling from factory. But as your personal weekend and track car this is the perfect platform. Modifications can be as cheap or expensive as you want them to be and feel free to watch back all the videos I've done working on my MX-5 to see exactly that. But as this car was made to handle amazingly well you can almost take it to a track day with a set of track pads and some decent tyres and you'll have the time of your life. Plus it's incredibly cheap and when in great condition won't cost you more than around £2,000 even in today's market and you'd probably want something you can work on anyway. Rust is an absolute killer on these though and there are some other known issues like lift to tick but all in that engine is supposed to be solid and ready for more power. I went down the supercharging route but you could go turbo or independent throttle bodies or whatever. The penultimate car I want to talk about in this list isn't actually as sporty looking as the other cars in this section but that doesn't make it any less capable both on B roads and the track especially when modified. The Renault Clio Renault Sport 182 has a 2 litre inline 4 engine that makes 182 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6.9 seconds. Not bad at all. Similar to the MX-5 I've just mentioned, if I was going for one of these as a track car, I'd probably do the pads and tyres and probably swap on a set of lighter alloys to lower the unsprung mass, then probably get the rear seats, delete kit and some buckets for the front and voila, track and weekend car sorted. I would only mention though that you should keep all the other parts you take off of it as over time these have started to become more cherished cars and though you're unlikely to get a minter for our price range in this video, you might still benefit from prices rising over the next few years if the car has all the right parts on it. Irrespective though, I think this is a really cool little car for many reasons, and I always see them bombing it around at track days, so definitely have to fit in the fun category. These start at around £2,500 and I'd probably want to spend at least 3k for a reasonable one to get started from, as though the engines are strong if serviced on time, the inlet cam timing variator is known to rattle and some gearboxes have had synchro issues. The final car I want to mention for this sub 10k video is arguably the most sporty and prestigious and probably deserves to sit in the classic section too. The 986 Porsche Boxster is a beaut. There are a few engine options across the 986 range and in this video's budget you can get the 2.7 litre flat 6 that makes 220 brake horsepower taking the car to 60 in 6.4 seconds. Now this might be more a weekend than track car but that's fine as you can still do both. Plus like the Renault and Mazda it has actually been used for racing here in the UK so you can get all the right parts if if you're that way inclined. I probably wouldn't do too much to one though, just more maintenance and preventative work to get it running smoothly and comfortably and it would just become a nice weekend sports car to take on cruises with friends. This is mostly because the 986 has really been increasing in value and though it isn't the S model, it's still a well loved car gaining a bit of classic status. It is slightly more expensive though, starting at around £4,000 so again it would limit you if your budget was hard at the 10k mark for all three cars. Service history is key on these as cracked bore liners, war chain guides and the IMS and RMS failures are known too. So we've gone through nine different cars I think you could pull together into that sweet three car garage for under £10,000 but I think I'd personally look to spend 4k on a Mark 5 Golf GTI, 4k on an Alfa Romeo Spider, and 2k on an old Mark 2 Mazda MX-5 to make my three car garage for £10,000. For me the GTI would be the most practical daily driver particularly if you got the five door but I'd probably go for the three. The Alfa is one of my favourite looking cars for the price and the Mazda is just the perfect foundation for a build as I've done with my Mark 1 MX-5. Of course this is all my opinion, let me know in the comments what selection of 3 cars you choose from this list, of course with a focus on maximising your fun. And we're back to me again, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please do hit the like button as I would really appreciate it, as I said a thousand likes I'll do the same video again in, in different kind of ways, like, I, I'm happy to do it however you fancy and if you want to suggest the type of car garage video you want to see in the comments down below. Mass thanks to the patrons always for their support and to you guys as well for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Listen.